Another year, another EB Games Expo at Sydney Olympic Park. EB Expo 2015 is my fourth year of attending this convention, which went down from October 2nd to 4th and has a massive show floor with different booths from different publishers showing off unreleased games. The show itself was the same as most years, big booths decorated in fancy marketing, a bunch of cars and tanks, an oddly large number of headphone stands. So instead of talking about those components, today I'm going to talk to you guys about the best three games I played at the show. I'm Alana, welcome to Button Bash. Number three is Star Wars Battlefront. I'm sure plenty of others would argue it's their number one favorite, but hear me out here. EB Expo had a demo of the Walker Assault mode on Hoth with 20 versus 20 battles on the PS4. The map is huge, so even with that many people, you never feel swamped, and thankfully the jetpack jump allows you to get from the spawn section into the action really quickly. There were a huge variety of vehicles with totally, totally different handling, and with that, some kind of confronting suicide bombing, and it never felt too different from Battlefield, except for the basically perfect authenticity. It does such a good job of capturing Star Wars. My main complaints are related to the auto-aim, which is overly eager. Auto-aim is somewhat necessary on such big maps, but it has you snap to players several times when you just aren't trying to because it's just so prominent. It's not a huge deal breaker, but a minor annoyance that grabbed me a few times when I basically never had that in a game before. I'm also worried about the longevity of it. It feels like it might be another Destiny or Titanfall scenario where after one hour of playing it, you know exactly what every subsequent hour is going to feel like. The Hoth map mostly just had people running at each other from spawn, rinse and repeat. Number two is Rainbow Six Siege, which I must admit a little biased to because I am a huge Rainbow Six fan. Siege is a hugely tactical, tense first-person shooter with an operator class system. Each player has to choose a role with a loadout and a special ability, and no other player can choose that same role. This means before you even start playing, you've got to be thinking about tactics. And it's made all the more intense by short rounds, shorter health bars, and small maps with plenty of points of entry for you to bridge or barricade. I have two very, very minor concerns regarding Siege. First being that objectives largely seem to be ignored. Rounds have objectives like hostages you have to capture or areas you need to secure, but most rounds seem to end in one team killing everyone on the other team. And this means that despite different game modes existing, there's little difference between them. The second is just that you're absolutely going to need a lot of communication to play this. If you're playing online with people who don't have mics or don't talk much, your team is going to get completely destroyed by, say, a group of friends playing together and talking through a party chat. Number one is, hands down, PlayStation VR. I played a demo called The Deep, which is more of an experience than a game in that there's no real interaction. You just stand in a cage that's being lowered into the ocean with a handful of different animals and environmental structures for you to look at. You put on the VR headset and then put a earphones headset over the top and then there's a button at the front left of the unit that lets you sort of adjust the size. It's incredibly light and comfortable with carefully placed padding around the nose and eyes, plus the button that lets you adjust the size makes it glasses friendly. While the graphics of the Deep itself weren't fantastic, it absolutely didn't suffer from the overly pixelatedness the Oculus Rift DK2 seems to have. I also didn't get any motion sickness with PlayStation VR, and I often do with Oculus games. So at this point, I think the image is better than the Oculus, and it's more comfortable, and it's lighter, so I can say I was pleasantly surprised. It's a pretty incredible piece of technology, I just really like to try some other games with it. I'm Alana, thanks for watching Button Bash.